I'm Phil Forder, I'm a glacial scientist. Every year I lead expeditions to spectacular locations such as this to study glaciers. And in this short film we're going to answer two crucial questions. Why are glaciers important? Why are they interesting? So welcome to my beautiful world of snow and ice. One of the interesting things about glacier ice is that it's simply formed from compressed snow. And as that snow becomes compressed, we get these millions of tiny air bubbles left in the ice. So if I use a bit of glacier ice as an ice cube in my drink, I could be drinking ice that fell snow during Roman times or even earlier, before humans existed on the planet. Cheers. I'm now in a tunnel beneath the Fay Gletscher. So we're beneath several tens of metres of ice. It's very cold, very dark, very wet down here. Certainly not the sort of place you want to linger. Uh, but if I just shine the light on the walls of the ice tunnel, you can see these most beautiful textures uh, in the ice, ice crystals growing on the surface, and some really lovely colours. Uh, just beautiful. As a glacier scientist, one of the questions I'm frequently asked is how fast the glaciers move. Well, a typical alpine glacier such as the one behind us, we can expect to move about half a metre per day. And to put that into context for you, if we travel from London to Brighton at that speed, it would take us almost 500 years to make the journey. I'm currently in the beautiful Swiss Alps, uh, just above the village of Saspe on a ridge. You can see behind me the Fay Glacier way in the distance, about a thousand metres above where we're currently stood. And we're going to take you on a very, very short journey to the front of that glacier, covering the last hundred years of glacial retreat. And where I stood now, if we were stood here in the early part of the 20th century, while the First World War was raging, for example, I could simply walk back off this ridge onto the glacier. If I walk back off the ridge now, I'm going to fall about 100 metres into the valley where the glacier used to be. I've just come down from the ridge where we were previously, where I stood now. 1950s, this is where the glacier was. 1953, in fact, the year Everest was successfully summited for the first time. I've been able to put my hand on the front of the glacier. We're 50 years further forward in time, but we've still got a long way to go to reach the front. Okay, we've come a few hundred meters up valley. We're now where the glacier was in the late 1970s. It was 1979, the year Margaret Thatcher was elected. Behind me, you can see trees. The glacier is out of sight over the horizon. We've got a long way to go yet and a lot of altitude to gain, so let's get moving. We've got a beautiful location for the end of our journey. We're here, right at the front of the Fay Gletscher. This is the front of the Fay Gletscher in 2012. You can just see behind me beautiful blue white glacier ice. Now that's the actual ferry front. We would love to take you there. As you can probably hear a lot of roaring noise in the background. That is Belfort Streams being driven by this beautiful weather today, nice sunshine, that makes large rivers that are too dangerous to cross. Now we're now at 2,700 metres, but what we can show you if we pan slowly down valley is the community of Saspe, many hundreds of metres beneath us. That's where we started our journey over a hundred years ago, the early part of the 20th century. Clearly this glacier contributed an awful lot over that uh, hundred year time scale. So there we have it, over a hundred years of glacier retreat and shrinkage condensed into a couple of minutes. Well, going back to the question I posed at the start of this short film, why are glaciers important? Well, one key reason is that most of this retreat and shrinkage has happened in the last 20, 25 years. And we've got several billion people globally, directly or indirectly dependent on glacier and snow melt for their water resource and for power generation. So clearly if glaciers are facing an uncertain future as they continue to shrink, there are great challenges for us all in future years. Now you might be wondering why I'm sat in the middle of the Swiss Alps with a, a lipstick in one hand and a piece of rock in the other. Well, you can probably see the light glinting off this rock and it's shining off mica, which is a mineral. This mineral gets crushed up and ground as glaciers move over bedrock and it's that crushed mica which is used in many cosmetics. The next time you're putting your makeup on, you know where that nice shimmery effect comes from. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this very short film and have now got some understanding about why I'm so passionate about working and studying these beautiful snow and ice environments. 